know that regulation is key. And everywhere in the world, call it ministry, call it federal, call it whatever, the moment you have somebody who is a regulator, the man is the person with the stick. And I'll give you a typical example. If you have a son who has come out of flying school and is the best in his class, and you have a private jet, trust me, he can't fly that jet until he has the minimum requirement yeah. that is required for him to fly the jet. It's your jet. So understand that when you're talking about a minister being given many, too many powers, remember that the ministry or the minister is an assignment. And we are not running a government that is going to terminate with her, you know, dying. Okay? We are saying that these are institutional statements that we must all conform to. I think the greatest problem we have in this country, my brother, and I think I need to make this point very strongly, is that we have gotten very comfortable with impunity. Absolutely. We have gotten comfortable with, how can you do this to this man? Eh? Do you know who he is? I know who he is. He's a human being and he's a Nigerian. That is who everybody in this country is. And until we begin to identify that everybody here is subject Subject to regulation. regulation. Then when you, I mean, does the minister say you can't fly your jet? Does it act say that minister can wake up in the morning and withdraw your license? Is there any way he says that? Well, we'll have to close, but oh. let, me, let me just touch, let me touch on this for one second. Because yes. I know that when you say the kind of thing you just said, yes. there's always the other side of the coin where oh. the assumption is, why is it that when it's convenient for yeah. people in government yeah. or around government, yeah. when it's convenient for them, they talk about, no, we will not allow impunity. Yes. And when it's not convenient, it yes. seems as if they turn a blind eye. Yes, in this case, I can tell you, this man sitting here, this man sitting here, is a white man that is carrying a black skin. <laughs> <laughs> so it has nothing to do with the minister. It has to do with this ever smiling guy who smiles and says to you, no, no, this is not right. <laughs> That's him. So he has nothing. The minister cannot even stop him. As director of airworthiness, he said, I am not going to do this as business as usual. You will do the right thing. Hate me or like me is inconsequential. Call it impunity or politics is inconsequential. I am not a politician. I don't belong to any political party. I am an engineer. If your aircraft is airworthy, fly it. Fly. If it's not, not airworthy, it's ground it taking off. So, my brother, it is not a matter of convenience. And let me first and foremost tell you, I was sharing this joke with somebody. I said, if this was during probably uh, a campaign period mm. or an election period where you had all your delegates <laughs> in your aircraft and then somebody stopped this aircraft, Eh? I don't think there's an election on now. I don't think there's any need for anybody to want yeah. to begin to allude politics to a very simple process. What is this simple process? You've asked us to come here by 9 o'clock. Some people will start blowing their sardines in here by 10.30 and say to you, go and bring the woman back and conduct the interview. That's impunity. And if you're a after 10 o'clock, nobody comes into this studio. Then somebody comes and say, ah, it is because I am... I am uh, from uh, PDP. That's why this woman is not waiting for me. <laughs> so why aren't we looking at these things the way we should look at them? If anybody okay. says to you, the minister is that powerful, be kind, my brother, because you are a stakeholder. A critical one. For your equipment to be able to fly in and out of this country, you need the aviation industry to run. For you to run you know, interviews around the country, you need the aviation system. Say, please, give me the section of these documents yeah. that says the minister can take and give life when it comes to aviation matters. Okay, uh, just as we <laughs> begin to wrap up then, uh, right. Engineer De La Car, let me touch base with you. A number of uh, what we saw on television at the last press conference, oh. which had the number of stakeholders, was a situation where people from customs and other organizations yes. raised serious concerns about engagement of stakeholders. And moving forward from here, what is the aviation ministry and NCA and FAN going to do to ensure that stakeholders are engaged in a way that this reform that uh, Dr. Hare said is yes 
thumbs up yeah. will not become one that will continue to hit brick walls because of stakeholders. What we'll probably need to do, we need to do more of what, what we've started now to get people together, exchange ideas, look at the regulation and look at the policy and if there's any area of ambiguity because things change. We have the last policy done in 2001. This is 2013. A lot of events, a lot of technologies, a lot of issues. The type of equipment that was being operated in 2001 is quite different from 2013. So we need to have a continuous uh, dialogue over and continuous review over the uh, policies. And we, we, I mean, we, we, we're open to criticism because that's why when you do a policy like that and everybody just embraces it, there's something wrong with it. But the policy, look, judging by the reaction, is capturing what it's supposed to capture. If you have a private aircraft before and you were doing it in operating it commercially and getting money in the back, now the rules are there. What we now have is we have to enforce it. You know, enforcement has to come in. Somebody has to now. We now have to start doing a job. What we are paid to do. That is the way I look at it. Mm. Yeah, what you are paid to do. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. No, but Nigeria is not really well known for enforcing its laws. Mm, is no. this going to be different? No, there is nothing really different. We are could cite examples where airlines come in and people try to set up airlines and maybe because they have connections or powers, you know, in the presidency. It's very easy. You know, you are, it depends on how you go about it. Somebody comes to my office now and says, I want to register an aircraft. Oh, I'm so powerful. Who is the minister to, you know, I kind of apply to the ministry to get an import license. I said, I will just open, my desk is full of all these regulations. I just say, thank you very much, sir. You're a very powerful man in this country. I'm sure if you go to the presidency, if you can get me an exemption, you know, I will honor it. Because when you look at this act at the back page, it was put together by the president, sorry, by the Senate, and there are signatures there by the then president. So this is from, this is well regulated. So if the, so the president now, or the Senate, has given the authority and said, this is the act, and that is what we are by with. And that is, and nobody in this book is exempted. Maybe when the next one comes in and they say, okay, if you are a governor or if you are a, uh, a president or a senator, you are exempted. You are exempted. Then we we'll do it. Okay. So all this now means that uh, we expect to see a better aviation sector. Better. We are expecting the best thing is out. The better um, one. Uh, the, and the guarantee is that it's not just a better one mm. locally. The message is that the aviation is not a local industry. And the regulations that control the aviation industry is also not local. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It's also not local. And it's it's cow, international yeah. and it's, it's, it's regional. Okay. See, so we are we also expecting to see better airports. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, the airport, yeah, better airports are there. Look in there. You can see them. They're there. So well, they're there. there. <laughs> We haven't seen any international standard airport. Oh, no, you need to move around. No, you need, to, around 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 to, no, you need to move around. To go where, please? please take your camera. Take your camera to the airport. Just take it to the airport. Mr. Lam, I, I passed yeah. through there three weeks ago. No, you passed no. through, please. Through. Through. Go, go in. Go in. Please, do go in. Don't pass through there. Just do go, go in. in. I, I, can, I can assure I you. I mean, I flew in, 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 out, and in. Just, I think you should go back there, ma'am. Okay. Trust me. All right. Now, can I make and that's the advice to all of you out there. Yes. Um, our aviation sector is moving rather fast, so you need to take a trip to Mutala Muhammad Airport and see all the changes that are happening there. I'm going to go there and I'm going to report back to you next week. <laughs> okay, we'll discuss it. So on that yes. note, I guess. Uh, yeah, I would, would like to say thank you very much. To you. you have some tweets? Uh, there are some, but there are questions, and we can't take any more questions. So okay. So I'd like to say we'll thank pass you. Pass it on to Engineer Deyeleka, and he can respond to them. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like to just say thank you very much to the two gentlemen who have okay. come to explain this new policy to us. Um, Engineer Benedict Adeyileka, who is Director of Airworthiness Standards at the NCAA. Thank you very much. As well as Dr. Emeka Okengu, who is a development consultant thank you very much. in the sector. Thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.